All right, so in this example, we're gonna take a look at Kirchhoff's loop rule and Kirchhoff's node rule. So I have a somewhat simple circuit here. It has two voltage sources of 80 volts and 45 volts and three resistors, okay? I've labeled the nodes as points A and B, all right, to help with, with that law a little bit. So let's take a look and, and try and figure out which direction the current goes, okay? Well, I'll, I'll cut to the chase and say it really doesn't matter which way you think it goes. The math will work out correct either way, assuming you, you do your math correctly. So I'm just going to choose that direction for one of the currents out of node A, I'm going to choose this direction as another current. I'll call that I1. I'll call this I2. And then on the, the, the circuit element or, or the path from B to A, I'm saying that current is I3. Okay? And those were completely ar arbitrary. I just made them up. Okay, We have three loops here, three connected and closed loops. One is from A down, around, up to B, and through the middle. That's one. Two is A up and around, down to B, and through the middle. And then the third is around the outside. Okay, those are three separate, distinct current loops. And so the node rule, meaning the current in has to equal the current out. For that, let's choose all nodes and simply write the currents in equal the currents out. So for node A, the currents in, current, is I3, and the currents out are I1 plus I2. That's it. For node B, well, it's pretty much the same thing. Right? Currents in equals currents out. But in this case, if I keep that same, I guess, pattern, I1 plus I2 equals I3. But that's really the exact same equation. Now, the, the voltage rule, right, that is for all potentials, all change in voltages across all loops, that has to be zero. Okay? <laughs> That has to be zero. So, actually, let's call um, this loop one. Did I do that in my notes? Yeah, that was one. Let's call this one down here loop two, and the one around the outside I'll call loop three. Okay? So, for loop one, let's choose an ar arbitrary point in that loop and continue around adding the voltages via Ohm's law until we come back around to that starting point. So let's start at point A. Okay, sure. Start there. Following the direction of the current that we've specified, right, because we've picked this direction for the current to be clockwise, we have to maintain that um, throughout the entire problem. Okay, our math will follow which direction we choose the current. Either it's that direction, that direction, or that direction. We just have to be consistent. Okay. So, starting at point A, well, going around, we have a potential drop, right? We're not necessarily starting at zero volts at point A. We're just starting at point A. So, we have a negative current 1 times what I have as 30 ohms. I'll leave off the, the units for brevity. So, we have a potential drop moving in the direction of our current across that 30 ohm resistor, and then continuing down to point B. Now we encounter that node, but we're on loop one, so we have to go through the middle, which means we're going this way to the left. And this now is current three. That's what we're calling is moving through the center segment here. So it's no longer current one. Uh, because of that, we have a voltage increase because we're passing through that 
battery, so plus 45 volts. And then now across that 41 ohm resistor, we have minus I3 times 41. Okay. Remember, these terms are all in voltages thanks to Ohm's law. V equals IR. That's why I have the voltage there and then I times R for each of those terms. Okay. And so this total loop, since we're back at point A, has to add up to zero. Okay. So that was for loop one. For loop two, down below, again, choose an R arbitrary spot to start at. I'll also choose A, but it doesn't matter. Um, following the direction of the current we've specified, going down, right, uh, we now... The first element we encounter is a potential increase of 80 volts. I'll just label it as 80. And then we decrease by an amount I2 times the resistance of that one. Okay, so minus I2 times 21 ohms. And then coming up to B, again at that node, but we're in loop 2. So we go through the middle now, and again it's current 3. So we, whoops. <coughs> so we have plus 45 minus I3 times that 41 again. And that's equal to zero. For loop three, now it's just along the outside. So tell you what, let's start at point B, okay? Just to change th things up a little bit. And I will go clockwise, okay? So starting at point B, this direction. At point B, the first circuit element going clockwise we encounter is this 21 ohm resistor here. Since we're going this direction, which is in the opposite direction as the current I2 specified in this segment, we have to do the opposite of what we normally would do. Right? If we're following the current direction, Normally, across a, a resistor, it would be a voltage drop, right? But because in this specific instance with the loop rule, we chose to go clockwise around, this would be a voltage increase, okay? And that's very important. So plus, what is it? I2 times 21, okay? That positive is important because it's in the opposite direction of the current direction we've specified. Okay, Continuing along, we're going to the left, right, along or across that battery. So we're going from positive to negative. We have a voltage decrease, minus 80. Continuing up past point A, now we're in the direction that we've specified for current one, and we reach that 30 ohm resistor. And now, since we're in that same direction, now it's nice and normal, what we're used to, I1 times 30. Now it's a negative, okay? Now it's a voltage drop, again, because we're going in the same direction as the current. And then we're back around at point B, okay? So that we're equal zero here. So what we have, effectively are four equations. We have one, two, three, four, okay, that we'll use to solve for each of these currents, I1, 2, and 3. I want to rewrite the loop rule equations a little more clearly, um, and just because it's me, this is a personal thing, I like to have all of the, the voltages, right, the total voltage on one side of the equation and then everything else on the other side. Uh, you can keep it as written, all equal in zero. It's up to you, but I would suggest uh, cleaning these equations up and try not to have the variable leading. Meaning, let's write this as 30 times I1 and then plus 41 I3. This, I think, looks a little cleaner than what I have above it. And the next equation, combining 80 and 45, we have 125. And then bringing the 
IR terms to the right side, we have 21I2 plus 41I3, okay? And then the third equation, we just have 80, so I'll bring that to its own side, and then keeping the IR terms as is, we have... Uh, yeah, I don't like a negative, leading negative, but I want to keep the currents in numerical order. So let's do negative 30 I1 plus 21 I2. Okay, and this is a little more clear, right? A, a little more concise. And this is a system of equations, right? Here we have three equations and three unknowns, right? Uh, however, we need a fourth equation, to be able to solve, okay? If you were to try and solve for I1 and I2 and I3 using just the, these equations, you could not do it. You, you'd go in circles, right? Because we got each of these equations based upon, well, we kind of reused some of those loops and values here, right? We have to have another distinct relationship separate from how we got these loop equations, okay? So if you use any one of these equations, right, either of these in conjunction with your equations down here, the answers you'll come up with for the currents are I1 is, wait a minute, I1 is negative 0 0.86 amps, I2 is 2.58 amps, and I3 is 1.73 amps. If you would like to see the mathematics behind how I got these values, uh, feel free to continue watching. Um, otherwise, feel free to, to stop the video now. Um, but I will now show you how to mathematically calculate those values, right? Before you go, though, I should say, I should explain this negative sign, okay? That negative sign right there. That comes from the fact that these current directions were completely our arbitrary guesses, right? They were random. We guessed and said, oh, we think the current one goes this way. Well, it turns out this minus sign actually means that in this segment of wire here, the current one goes that way, right? I2 and I3, we guessed the direction correctly, good. But I1 just means it goes that way. The same magnitude, but it's just other way, right? So if you would like to see how I got these numbers, continue watching. Otherwise, uh, feel free to stop the video now, okay? So let's see, I'm going to take this system of equations instead of rewriting. Man, I like doing that. So we have that one along with our, whoops, node rule equation. And now we have this system of equations, four equations and three unknowns. That's completely solvable. So what do we do first? Well, I want to solve for I1 and I2 from one of these three equations, right? Since this equation already gives us what I3 will be, we just need to solve for I1 and I2. So I'm going to solve the top equation for I1, okay? That will get it in terms, whoops, of I3. So that means we have 45 minus 41 I3 all over 30. And I'm going to solve, let's see, I'm going to solve equation 2 here for I2, because I'll plug that expression in for I2 down here, and it will be in terms of I3. Okay, so let's see. I2 equals 125 minus 41, I3, all over 21. Okay, and so now I'm going to take these expressions, take I1, 
plug it in right there. Take I2, plug it in there. See what we get. So we have 45 over 30 minus 41 over 30 times I3 plus 125 over 21 minus 41 over 21 times I3. Now this entire equation is in terms of I3, right? So combine like terms and, uh, let's see, let's put this in fractional form. Well, yeah, I guess I should. I guess I should. So 45 over 30, that's 1.5. And then minus 41 over 30. Oops. I don't have these numbers um, written out. I apologize. 1.37. And then 125 over 21. 5.95. And then 41 over 21 is 1.95. Okay, so now combining like terms, we should have one plus 1.37 plus 1.95. All right, and that should give us 1.58 times I3. And then everything that remains is simply 1.5 plus 5.95. So now I3 wait a second. One plus one point three seven plus one point nine five. Oh there we go. I, I apologize. That is four point three two. There we go. Four point 3, 2 times I3. So now that total current is 1.72. There we go. Amps. So now that we have I3, we can take that and plug it into any equation up here from the loop rule for I3. Uh, it doesn't matter. Actually, I'll plug it in right here so that I1 is equal to 45 minus 41 times our 1.72, and all that over 30, and this should come out to our answer from the previous slide, like I said, negative, I'll do it down there, negative 0.86, then knowing I1, we can plug that into, say, equation 3 and solve for I2. Or, actually, tell you what, we can plug that into the node equation. It's even easier right there. Okay, so I2 is I3 minus I1. So that's 1.72 minus negative 0.86, and that is our 2.58. And that's how you mathematically solve that system of equations. Right. Thanks for watching.